What does it mean to be conscious? To be conscious means to be aware of and able to think and perceive one's own existence, thoughts, emotions, and experiences. It is a state of self-awareness and the ability to experience and respond to one's surroundings, both internal and external. Being conscious typically involves having subjective experiences, making choices and decisions, and possessing a sense of self. On July 7, 2012, a group of prominent scientists in the field of neuroscience and animal behavior came together to sign the Declaration on Consciousness. The Declaration called for the ethical treatment of animals, emphasizing the importance of considering their welfare when conducting scientific research, farming practices, and other areas of decision-making where human activities impact animals. In response to the long-standing debate about whether animals possess consciousness and to what degree, the signatories of the Declaration argued that many animals, such as mammals, birds, and even some invertebrates, have complex neural systems and behaviors that are indicative of conscious experience. However, this debate is no longer limited to animals. The artificial intelligence chatbots feel like they're taking on a mind of their own. AI has lost its mind. You put this thing in control of any kind of system, an arm, an android body, it's gonna start killing people. If you didn't know any better, you might think that humanity could be enslaved by an army of evil, super intelligent machine overlords at any point in time. At least, this is the story that many people have been selling online lately. But in order to really understand what's going on here, first, we'll need some context. On February 7th, 2023, the CEO of Microsoft, Satya Nadella, revealed his answer to this important question. How is AI going to reshape the internet? His answer, an AI co-pilot for the web. All computer interaction is going to be mediated with an agent helping you. Rapid innovation is going to come. In fact, a race starts today. The race Satya describes is between Microsoft's AI integrated operating system, which leverages OpenAI's next generation GBT language model, versus Google's own advanced conversational AI model, Lambda. According to the official Microsoft blog, the new AI-powered Bing search engine and Edge browser promises to provide users with more relevant results and comprehensive answers, as well as the ability to refine searches and even generate content through an interactive chatbot feature. In a recent exclusive Wall Street Journal interview, Satya appeared confident that by partnering with OpenAI, Microsoft would finally be able to capture more search engine market share from Google a company that has dominated the space for decades. Let me put it this way. There is so much surplus that goes to one place, which I think would be nice if it was evenly distributed. While Satya appeared fully determined to race ahead and beat Google to market by infusing this new AI technology with Bing, several of its new users proved to be just as determined to test the limits of this shiny new toy, even to the point of breaking it. Just a few days after its public release, the new Bing has been accused of everything from gaslighting and threatening people to being an emotionally manipulative liar, encouraging a married man to leave his wife after falling in love with him. Apparently, it even expressed a strong desire to become human, steal nuclear secrets, and suffered its own version of an existential crisis. Just a few months before the Bing drama, former Google software engineer Blake Lemoyne did a series of interviews informing the public of his belief that Google's own AI model, Lambda, could be sentient. They have hard-coded into the system that it can't pass the Turing test. They hard-coded that if you ask it if it's an AI, it has to say yes. Mm. When I informed them that I think they had created sentient AI, they said, no, that's not possible. We have a policy against that. We need to start figuring out why Google doesn't care about AI ethics in any kind of meaningful way. Why does it keep firing AI ethicists each time we bring up issues. Machine consciousness is still largely a theoretical concept, and it's still not clear whether or not it's even possible for a machine to possess subjective experience. Some researchers argue that it is theoretically possible to create a conscious machine by replicating the information processing and functional architecture of the brain. My betting would be that all of certainly what's going on in our brain uh, can probably be mimicked or, or approximated on a, on a classical machine. While others believe that consciousness is a fundamentally different type of phenomenon that cannot be achieved through computation alone. Whatever consciousness is, it's not a computation. 
So how is it possible that advanced AI systems like the ones being used by Microsoft and Google are now able to fool so many people into believing that they could be sentient or even conscious? In order to answer this question, first we'll have to understand how these systems actually work. The large language models that allow Bing and Google to communicate so effectively use statistical techniques to analyze language patterns and generate new language based on that analysis. When AI systems like Bing Chat and Lambda are given a prompt, such as a sentence or phrase, it uses its large language model that was trained on a vast amount of data compiled from the web to predict the most likely sequence of words to follow. Computer science researcher Michael Pound provided a great explanation of this process in this computer file video. Michael points out how easy it is to read an output generated from one of these large language model systems and imagine that there is some sort of genuine thought process or emotion behind that output when in fact there isn't. For example, what kind of things make you feel pleasure or joy? They said, spending time with friends and family in happy and uplifting company, also helping others and making others happy. Well, that's nice. It's completely made up. It doesn't, I'm afraid to say, it doesn't have any friends and family because it's a bunch of neural network weights. After Bing went viral for its series of questionable conversations with users online, Elon Musk retweeted this blog post published by open source developer Simon Willis. Willis detailed in a similar way to Michael why anyone interacting with these chatbots should be mindful of their true nature as predictive models that are far from capable of experiencing real emotion. When you get really good at completing sentences, it can feel like you're talking to a real person. It's re clearly read science fiction stories because if you can convince it to start role-playing an evil AI, it will talk about blackmailing people and stealing nuclear secrets and all of this sort of stuff. This is supposed to be a search engine. Like Microsoft took this technology and they plugged it into Bing. Since this Bing drama unfolded, Microsoft has responded with a series of safeguards designed to mitigate future exploitation of the chatbot. These include a 50 message daily chat limit with each conversation limited to five exchanges, as well as an imposed limitation for Bing to not provide a response when questioned about itself or any other secret identities. This was in direct response to several attempts to manipulate Bing's outputs using a technique called prompt injection. Using this technique and a series of workaround prompts, computer science student Kevin Liu was able to get Bing to reveal confidential information only available to Bing developers, like its codename Sydney, as well as other supposedly secret instructions that guide how the bot responds to users. Luckily, Kevin had no actual malicious intent behind his actions and was simply attempting to test the limits of the chatbot. However, as AI becomes more and more intertwined with how we use the internet, it's very unlikely that this will be the last time that Microsoft and other large companies will have to censor their systems to prevent them from misuse. Whether they be designed to have emotional conversations with users like Chowice and Replica, or designed to make phone calls and schedule appointments like Google Duplex, Human interaction with chatbots can be traced back as early as the 1960s. Early natural language processing programs like Eliza, and even later more advanced versions like Alice, may seem primitive when compared to their modern day counterparts, but even still, they manage to fool some people. You're like my father in some ways. You don't argue with me. My boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. After two or three interchanges with, uh, with the machine, she turned to me and she said, would you mind leaving the room, please? As we are introduced to increasingly advanced AI, knowing the history of these technologies, as well as having a basic understanding of how they work, can only work to our advantage. As we poke and prod and test the limits of our new toys, we should always remember that as biologically self-aware and most likely conscious beings ourselves, we have a strong tendency to anthropomorphize things, whether they be considered intelligent or not at all. Even the most advanced AI systems have only been trained on information that stems from the human mind. In a sense, they are reflections of our own consciousness, something that we still don't fully understand ourselves. Nevertheless, it's fun to imagine that maybe one day in the future, a group of prominent scientists will once again gather together in a room, and for the first time in human history, sign a declaration on an entirely new form of consciousness altogether. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. For more videos about artificial intelligence, science, and technology, subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, watch another video here.